Hello and welcome to another episode of Fast Pace Tutorials. In this quick video, I'm going to show you how you can use Azure Active Directory identities to authenticate to Azure SQL Server. So the first thing to do is to create an Azure SQL Server instance. I have an existing resource group, which I'm going to use to create the SQL database. I'm going to call it SQL authentication demo. I do not have a server, so I have to create a new one. Call it SQL authentication server. We actually can spell it server demo. I'm, I'm going to give it a name for the admin login. Now, this part is particularly important and, and, and tricky because the name that you provide here shouldn't conflict with the name of the user, with the actual display name of the user that you're going to select as the Active Directory admin. So just make sure you select something else. I'm going to call it SQL admin, and then I'm going to provide the password, repeat it here. And East US for the location is just fine. We're not going to use a SQL Elastic Pool. And because I'm just using this SQL Server for a quick demo, I'm going for basic. The rest of the options I'm not going to touch. Just actually create, review and create, and then click on create. It's going to take a couple of minutes. I'm going to pause the video and I'll continue when the resource is created. Now that the SQL Server is created, I'm going to go to the resource. It's going to take me to the SQL database, but I need to go to the SQL Server instance, which is going to be this one. And the reason is what we are going to do here is to assign an Azure Active Directory admin to this SQL Server, which is a server level setting and you can find it right here the first option under setting is azure active directory click on set admin and look for the user you want to assign i'm choosing this one select you also have the option to disable sql authentication and use azure active directory only to authenticate to this uh, database instance but i'm not going to do so Click on save. And that's it. Now we have an Azure Active Directory admin for our SQL Server. You can remove and assign another user if you want to, but, but you can only have one admin. Now, let's go to the firewall and virtual networks. So I can add my IP address to the firewall. So we can connect to it. Seems like I have a space at the beginning. Okay, save. Okay, now let's connect to our database server. And for that, I need the address. And I'm going to use SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio, to connect to our server. So I'm going to put the name here. And then we have obviously SQL Server authentication option where we can use the login ID and the password we provided at the time of the uh, creation of this server or we can switch over to Azure Active Directory hyphen universal with MFA and then use our Azure Active Directory admin we just uh, allocated to this server to log in which for me is this user. Now let's click on connect. What happens now is that I'm going to be asked to log in using my credentials. You have to put my password. And that's it. If I have MFA enabled in Azure Active Directory, it's going to ask me to provide the uh, multi-factor authentication code. 
depending on how it's set up. Otherwise, as you can see, you will connect to the server. Now, how can we add other users to SQL Server? For that, we have to execute a SQL query. So let's select our database, click on New Query, and this is the command that we have to execute. So create user, we have to put the user ID here, and it's going to be in the form of an email address from external provider with default schema. So this piece is actually telling SQL Server that this user is coming from Azure Active Directory. Which Azure Active Directory tenant to connect to and look for this user? SQL Server knows that based on the admin user that we have assigned to it. And then the second uh, line is basically giving the DB owner, and it's there's a typo here, DB owner role to the user. Now this user is also added to the SQL Server and if I close this command here, disconnect from here, try to connect and this time put uh, the email address of Chris and click on connect. It's going to ask me to log in. It even is going to ask me to update my password because this user is just created and this is the first time uh, Chris is logging in. So let's do that as well. And we logged in as Chris. Something to note is that only the Azure Active Directory admin that we selected earlier can add other users from Active Directory to the SQL Server. And the other thing is, here we used actual users that we created in Active Directory, but you also can use managed identities. For example, if you have an app service or a virtual machine that you want to uh, connect to this database server from, you can just simply go enable the identity on those services and then add the identity here to the SQL Server and that way you can connect to the SQL Server without providing username and password. That's it. I hope you learned something new today.